What's going on guys? Today I'll be going over some of the details you might have missed in chapter 284 of My Hero Academia, including why Afro Deku is now 100% canon. If you're new to the channel, I've been doing these breakdowns for the last couple weeks, so be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see me do them more often. Also, shout out to all of the Patreon gang, especially Trey Cash and Kronos GW. Your support is immense and I really do appreciate it. Okay, so moving on to the breakdown, the first interesting thing to note in this chapter is the state of Deku's left side when everything begins. Currently, his left arm is holding all the pro heroes using Black Whip, but if you remember a couple of chapters ago, this same arm gave Shigaraki two separate smashes at 100% of one for all. So, uh, I mean, it's already been established that Midoriya can use about 30% consistently. So once all the adrenaline wears off and, you know, everything cools down, he is 100% screwed. His right arm was already messed up after his battle with Muscular. So I'm really concerned that by the end of, you know, his time at UA, he's just not going to have any limbs left. Because of the amount of stress that he's put on his body, Black Whip starts to spaz out and he lowers the good guys back down to earth. And I found it quite funny how Endeavor thinks that he should be the one up there fighting Shigaraki right now. Don't get me wrong, like obviously he's the number one hero, but he began the day fighting the Nomus in the hospital, and then he fought the high-end Nomus in the lab, before fighting Shigaraki himself, and then chasing Shigaraki down and fighting him again. Like dude, it it's okay to take a break. Bakugo shows some genuine concern for Deku in this moment, because, you know, as, as I explained, now it's just Midoriya and Shigaraki alone together in the sky, when in reality, Deku should be the furthest person away from the villain, given that Shigaraki's entire goal is just to steal one for all. However, Izuku rightly points out that no one else can keep Shigaraki off the ground. I mean, the other flying heroes, right, they're either on the verge of death or they're injured or really exhausted, so he does have a valid point. Not to mention that even if the other flying heroes were healthy and fit, none of them have a long-range quirk like Black Whip, which enables Deku to kind of keep Shigaraki at arm's length and not get decayed. We get this awesome panel of our two main characters hurtling towards each other in the sky, and Deku's left arm is being held together by Black Whip at this point. Meanwhile, the right side of Shigaraki's body isn't doing too well either, as he's still suffering from the effects of being woken up early. Though stick around till the end of the video, because you'll see a big difference between uh, his injuries now and his injuries at the end of the chapter. Moving on, the manga flashes back to a character who I never thought I'd see. I'd love to tell you that Afro Deku had some dramatic backstory, you know, maybe he was a failed cloning attempt, or perhaps Deku's secret twin brother, but in reality, he is just the result of Bakugo letting off explosions directly in Midoriya's face. The two of them had been playing a game during training in which Deku had to try and catch Bakugo with Black Whip. However, due to Midoriya losing every time, all Might arranged for him to train with Sero, Ochako, and Froppy instead. One detail that lets us know when this training is taking place is when All Might says that Aizawa is currently busy and so he can't help Deku with his Black Whip technique. In this panel, we see Kurogiri who is locked up in Tartarus, and so this strongly implies that this training occurred on the same day we found out that Kurogiri is Aizawa's childhood best friend. This brings us to a very interesting piece of trivia about the title of this chapter. But first, let me explain a little bit of context. Way back in chapter 253, the students had just arrived back from their winter break and were about to show off what they'd learned. However, Aizawa was abruptly called to the staff room and had to leave, which is obviously then when he went to Tartarus prison. It wasn't until three chapters later that we saw the students' new moves in a chapter titled High Deep Blue Sky. In this chapter, Deku uses Black Whip in midair to pull these robots towards him before finishing them off with a deadly kick. By comparison, the title of chapter 284 is Deep Blue Battle, in which Deku has Shigaraki ensnared by Black Whip and proceeds to kick straight through him after the training flashback is over. This parallel is something I thought was a cool easter egg, and Horikoshi had clearly been plotting this many months ago by showing us the potential of what Deku could do and then finally executing it on a villain. As I said in my spoiler review for this chapter, Ochako makes Deku float, which gets him more accustomed to the sensation, and in the words of All Might, it could actually lead to him unlocking his third quirk. Meanwhile, 
Froppy acts like a target for Deku to catch with Black Whip, while Sero helps Midoriya with his posture and his form. Whilst Bakugo and All Might chill together, Kachan raises the very valid point that people won't be fooled forever once Deku keeps manifesting new quirks. I've previously mentioned the same thing because Float is not just something that you could say is the same quirk as Black Whip or One For All. If I was a member of Class 1A, I start to suspect that All Might's close connection to Deku is something to do with All For One. Even Bakugo himself made that same connection in Season 3, so I see more of Class 1A starting to realise this. Bakugo then goes on to mention how despite Deku trusting All Might, the former symbol of peace is still hiding things about One For All from them, especially regarding the fourth user. I did a theory video about this exact topic a few days ago, um, so I highly recommend you check that out. Also, I have one more thing to add to this theory that I didn't mention in the original video, so I may as well mention it now. And that is that we've seen that Black Whip only activated when Deku was trying to capture someone. And likewise, Float only activated when Deku was trying to keep Shigaraki off the ground. So clearly, the quirks inside One For All, they only appear when the relevant emotion or desire is present. And so in the case of Decay, that type of quirk would only manifest if Deku genuinely had killing intentions, like he wanted to truly murder someone. If All Might is hiding the secret of Decay, then that would be based on a trust and confidence in Deku that he won't be trying to kill anyone anytime soon. Naturally, All Might could not have foreseen that Deku would be in a life or death battle with Shigaraki right now, um, so maybe, you know, he didn't anticipate this. But again, when it comes to One For All, quirks don't manifest until the emotion is relevant. Anyway, the chapter ends with Bakugo admitting how his arrogance led him to bully Deku, which is clearly now something that he regrets. An interesting line from All Might was how Bakugo and Endeavor are pretty similar in that they never took a moment to look at their own behavior until a big change happened to their rival. In Endeavor's case, he didn't look at himself until All Might became the skeleton man that he is today, and in Bakugo's case, he didn't have a look either until Deku became what he's becoming. Because Bakugo does feel regret for the way he's treated Deku, that is partly why he's helping Deku with his training and trying to master all these new quirks. In my opinion, the similarities between Bakugo and Endeavor extend well beyond what All Might mentioned because, I mean, just for an example, their demeanor, like the way they present themselves, is quite off-putting to regular people. Uh, not to mention, of course, that they both have quirks that are quite explosive and fiery, and they're both destined to be second place to users of One For All. It's just an inevitable fact that they will never surpass the people that they're desperate to surpass. The chapter goes back to the present day, with Bakugo dragging Endeavor to go and help Deku, which implies that next chapter we're gonna get some kind of flash fire attack that will be intended to finish Shigaraki off. Deku then kicks Shigaraki in the stomach, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and we get this sick panel of him maneuvering through the air using float, and then uh, he kind of admits that his left arm is completely wrecked, um, but then goes in for one final punch with his right arm. I just gotta say, Shigaraki does not look pleased at how things are progressing, uh, but he takes yet another punch to the gut, which is very similar to uh, a few chapters ago when Endeavor gave Shigaraki the vanishing fist attack. But even in that situation, Shigi was still able to remain conscious despite all his quirks being erased. So I'm not too sure how much of an impact Deku's punch is gonna have here, but we will see. If we compare the wound on Shigaraki's right side at the beginning of the chapter, to the end of the chapter, his super regeneration is still very much working, it's still, you know, doing its job. Um, but in Deku's words, he's healing at a slower rate, but still, I'm not sure how much of an impact one punch will have. Hopefully, it could at least knock him unconscious, because if that could happen, then I think Shigaraki's body would still regenerate, but he would still be unconscious. Uh, that's the desired situation at this point. Uh, but whether it will happen, highly unlikely, but uh, we shall see. Those were some of the details that you might have missed in My Hero Academia chapter 284. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.